Hi guys, it's me Malcolm, the movie Wizard of Oz himself, and I want to discuss my Guilty Pleasure movies. You may all know my Guilty Pleasure movies from the 2010s, the 2000s, and the 90s, but what about the ones for the 80s? I mean, I absolutely loved the 80s. It was a great time back there. I mean, I absolutely loved the music, for example. But nothing best of the 80s than this one. Oh, this was my favorite one hit wonder ever. <laughs> I don't know why I heard it, heard it in Bring It On, but that wasn't this cover. It was sang by Bewitched. I mean, I absolutely love the 80s, but I'm doing this not just for me, but I'm doing it for my best friend in the whole wide world, Derek Fleek. <laughs> yeah, that's you, my man. I'm calling out to you. I mean, so far, Derek is being such a great Facebook friend. I mean, we gossip about everything about movies. I mean, and he absolutely loved my reviews. So, for this, for this list, I'll be doing my top 10 guilty movie pleasures of the 80s. I mean, why not? For, the, for this list, I'll be discussing all the movies that did terribly in the box office, but they, are, they have been absolute cult classics ever since and I really do love each and every one of them and just to give you an update I don't have all of these DVDs of these movies only have about four of them just four okay let's get started number 10 children of the corn oh, this was was a frightening horror movie that I've ever seen that was Writ written by Stephen King himself. I mean, the the diner scene where all the kids just murderous, murderously ki killed off the adults. Adults, that's crazy. Crazy. And, and sacrificing all the kids that reached the age of 18. Oh, that was wild. But I do admire, but I do admire how, how those two little kids, kids help help the adults that entered, entered that town. And I do, do absolutely hate that, that redheaded kid with that big mouth. He, he really gets on my nerves. He was such an ass. But nothing's more of an ass than. Than Isaac. He was such a fanatic. Okay, here's number nine, which is one of my favorite superhero movies. Movies from a franchise. Superman 3. Oh, I mean, I really do love, love that one, especially with Richard Pryor in it. Oh, he was so funny in that one. that one. I do like the part where where both good Clark Kent battles against evil Superman and and fighting off like that. It was like a typical met metaphor. Four. 
And I do admire how Richard Pryor helped Superman against those bad guys, even though he, he was working with them. Oh, that was amazing, though. And I really admire the other woman in, in Clark's love life, Lana Lang, who, who in the future played played Mar Martha Kent in the TV series Smallville. Oh, she was a she was beautiful though back in the day. Okay, here's number eight, Xanadu. Oh my God, Xanadu was the best. I absolutely love love it. So I love the opening scene how it showed each of the nine muse. Muse. Yes. And I do love the romance between between the skate owner and the muse, played by Olivia Newton John. She was beautiful. She was more like she was more like a fairy than a muse. Yes. I really do love the music, like like one of Olivia's songs, Magic. That was so beautiful. And I really do admire how they named a club, a, a skating club after, after Kuba Khan's, Khan's summer home. <laughs> Weird. Okay, here's number seven, Cole. Before there was, there was The Hobbit or Lord of the Rings, there was this movie called Cole, which has the exact typical odyssey. A hero tries to rescue a princess from the beast, beast, along with his merry band of thieves and thieves and a wizard who really, really don't wasn't a master of magic. And I really do, I really do admire the other creatures though, like the Cyclops, um, the, um, the beast's minions. <laughs> yes. Oh. And. Yeah, I guess that's it. But I do love that weapon, though, with that, with that spinning, spinning blade. Like, that was ama amazing. I remember when I first saw it on Ready Player One, how Sho was using it against Iraq. <laughs> that was an awesome weapon to have. And I really do admire how the prince had fire powers in the ending. He was awesome. Okay. Here's number six that contained both Jason Patrick and Jamie Gertz before they were in in The Lost Boys. Solar Babies. Oh, I must say, it had the sack. It was so similar than the movie The Maze Runner. I mean, six kids in an apocalyptic world. Crazy. And I really do admire little Lucas ha Haas. Who made friends with the orb Bodhi? Bodhi, it was it. That thing was so magical. It it looked like a it looked like a fairy, right? When it moved like that. That I like it how Jason Patrick and the others bonded with it when they were when. It, when his energy passed on from hand to hand and they weren't when they were in a circle. That was amazing though. And I really do like the adventure they went off off against those bad guys. That was awesome. Oh, yeah. Even though this movie had a zero percent, I really do love it. Okay, here's number five. Harry and the Hendersons. I mean, why not? John Lee. Lift Grow was amazing in this one. I really do admire the family, how they bonded with with Harry the Bigfoot. Oh, at first they had a rocky start, but they managed to get along. Well, mo well, most of them, no except for the daughter. But she did did came around when Harry gave her lots of roses. That was so nice of him. I read I really do admire the villain, the the French hunter who keeps chasing Harry, but he always keeps failing all the time. But I did like it how he came around and saw there was goodness in him. 
Yes. <laughs> I guess you shouldn't underestimate your enemies. And and Harry the Henderson was always one of my favorite family movies around the 80s. Hands down. Okay. Okay, here it goes with the DVDs. Here's number four, which is a sequel to my favorite best movie in the 80s. Ghostbusters 2. I mean, this movie really do succeed to its predecessor. Predecessor to me in my book. I really do admire the admire the new the ghosts, the new adventures they did. <laughs> did? I really do admire the villain and V Vigo the Destroyer. Oh. He was frightening though when when he gave me the creeps back back in the day. In fact, there were some scary movie some scary moments that did give me the creeps, like the bath like the bath scene with the pink ooze coming out and trying to capture the baby. Oh how Janusz Janusz the art art director director who was a minion to Vigo became a ghost ghostly nanny and captured captured the baby. Oh he gave me the creeps when he dressed like that. Those red eyes though. But but nothing's more scarier in in the abandoned train that in train tunnel when when three of the Ghostbusters went inside and saw the saw the saw those floating heads. Yes, that was scary though. Not to mention that ghost train. Yeah. But it did I do love the funny moments in this one. <laughs> I really like it how they use that slime to make it more, make it have good possibilities. How they use it on the Statue of Liberty to make it move. Oh, that was amazing. Amazing. I really absolutely love this one. Okay, here's, oh, number three which is the sequel to my favorite favorite fantasy movie in 1939 The Wizard of Oz of course it's Return to Oz before Frizzabalk was in The Craft or The Water Boy she bec she was a former child actress actress who played Dorothy Gale herself oh my god I really did love this one. 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 It did have a had dark moments though. It, it really did have dark moments like like the Wheeler scene or or how Dorothy was in that asylum almost getting shock therapy from those doctors. Oh, that was crazy. She was this close. But I do love Love the new friends she made. I mean, TikTok, Jack Pumpkinhead, The Gump. Oh, I really do love love the scene where she finally figure out which ornaments the Gnome King turned them into. <laughs> of course, it. Of course, he would turn them into green. I mean, I do believe that was his favorite color. <laughs> and to think he had the ruby slippers, which which gave him the ability to. Conquered the Emerald City. Oh, that was that was brutal, though. I really do love Mombi. How she have thirty other heads. Oh, that was a scary moment right there. How Dorothy woke woke her up, up, and they all scream like that. The the other heads, though, frightening. Okay, here's number two, which is, which has been my faith, fan favorite ever since. Since it's True Beverly Hills. Oh my God! Before Shelley Long um, played Carol in the Brady Brunch movies, she played like a different mother, Phyllis Neff Neffler, who became, who is a. Came, who is a rich woman and 
also became a troop leader to the to the to Troop Beverly Hills. Oh, I really do admire it. I really do love the part with that sa with that sassy little little black girl introducing her father to the police. At least that was that was a absolutely amazing. It's one of my favorite scenes ever. I really do like it how she sang sang the song song for her c for their cookie drive for the jamboree. That that was amazing. Oh uh, oh I really do lo love it how they oh I really do love it how Phyllis Nether was on that log trying to climb climb on um, when the bridge was cut down. Um, that took guts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. True Belly Hills was was like a sleeper was like a sleeper hit to me. Do you know that Tori Spelling was in this? She played one of the one of the rivalry team called called Culver City Wet Red Feathers. <laughs> Who ever thought? Okay. Okay, now we're down to number one. This is one of my favorite movies from from a from its greatest franchise ever. And it had some scary moments, yet funny moments. Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Oh my god. This was one of my favorite movies to watch ever. I really did love the beginning scene in China when Willie sang Anything Goes in Chinese. It did had a show tunes vibe. I really do admire the the new character Short Round, Round who was also in The Goonies. Oh, that little kid was amazing. I wonder why he didn't show up in the se sequels though. He should have showed up in either Crystal Skull though. But and I really do do admire the scary scene in the t Temple of Doom of Kalima oh, with that heart ripping scene. Oh, that gave me the chills. Chills up. And I really do love love the mind the mind chasing scene. Oh, that was epic. So. Oh, and who can forget the, bri the bridge scene? Oh, that was so much better. I love when, when how in Andy finally succeeds in his missions. Oh, he is the best. But I do love the new love love interest, Willie Willie Scott. Uh, I mean, not only well, she's a great singer, but she mostly screams a lot. Such a diva. diva. <laughs> All in all, Indiana Jones is one of my favorite guilty pleasure movies ever, hands down. Okay guys, that's it. Those are my top 10 guilty pleasure movies of the 80s. So if you like this video, like, comment, subscribe, and make sure you stay healthy and stay at home. Bye.